Hey y'all, so what is keto? What's this crazy word people are talking about? Well, what they really mean is ketogenic diet or ketosis or elevating your ketone levels. Keto is just a short word for being in ketosis. But most people are looking at it as like, what's this keto diet all about? Well, reality, all it is, is reducing your carbohydrates, moderating your protein, increasing your fat intake, um, and allowing your body to produce ketones through burning your body fat. So yes, it's very similar to Atkins diet. It's very similar to low carb diet. That's very similar to it. But the, the key to keto is elevating your ketone levels to a therapeutic level if you really want the major benefits of energy, focus, mood, sleep, and fat loss. What is ketosis? We've heard this word now. Maybe it's something you heard in science class. Maybe something you heard your friends doing, this keto thing or, or ketogenic thing. Ketosis is really actually simple. It's All it means is you have an elevated ketone levels. And now there's multiple ways to get into ketosis. Most people are familiar with like a low carb diet or keto diet or maybe Atkins or modified Atkins. They're doing some variations of reducing their carbohydrates, maybe increasing their fat intake. Some of you may realize there's actually a way to supplement ketones, which is what I do on top of a low carb diet to elevate my ketone levels. So ketosis is an elevated state of ketosis or ketones. And it's actually been around our whole, our whole existence as humans. So it's very safe, very effective. It's a great tool to help improve the quality of your life for energy, focus, mood, sleep, and fat loss. So if you tried keto before, down below, just tell me if you've ever tried it. I'd love to hear from you. All right, what is a ketone? So you may have heard about the ketogenic diet, ketones, keto, ketosis, somebody doing this little thing, lost a bunch of weight. But what really is it? What's a ketone? A key, it's actually really simple. A ketone is energy. So it, it, your body primarily prior to the last five years, you would have to do a low carb diet. Your body metabolize your fat. Our ancestors have done this all of our existence through famine and low carb living just by, by the nat natural process. And it break your fat down into a ketone. And there's actually three forms of ketones. There's three in that are produced by the human body. And those ketones have energy. Um, one of the main ones being beta hydroxybutyrate. So it has an energy source, which provides you caloric value. So it provides you energy. So ketones are a sustainable fuel source that your body can run off of, that our ancestors have been running off of. And if you want to elevate your life and get healthier than ever, get into ketosis. So have you ever tried keto? Let me know down below. I get this one all the time. Is ketosis safe long term? And I kind of understand where people are coming from because it's like this is a new concept to them, but it's really not new scientifically. The ketogenic diet's been studied for 100 years. Uh, humans have been in ketosis all of our existence, nearly all of our existence, most of the time. So, what I can tell you is being out of ketosis is not safe long term. Being in ketosis is more natural and normal to the human body. Now, does that mean you're going to be in ketosis 24-7, uh, 356 days a year? No, it's probably not. We're going to live in a world where we're going to have some flexibility in our diet. But the reality is, is that eating a low-carb, healthy diet, nutritional plan is not unsafe. It's actually really safe for you. Now, there's some people with some rare health conditions that have to be more aware of this. But guess what? They kind of already are and they're already taking that initiative. So ketones are ketosis is absolutely safe. So who can do keto? Like who, who's it for? A lot of people are thinking keto and fat loss and overweight and I got to lose weight. The reality is, is the keto has been studied primarily for everything but that. Yes, it's a byproduct of going to ketosis is your own fat metabolism. So if you're somebody that needs to lose five pounds, 25 pounds, 150 pounds, doing keto or going low carb, uh, utilizing ketone supplementation that we've been using, yes, that is something um, that will help. But the reality is who's keto for? It's for performance. Who wants to live better, feel better, think better? It's about cognition. It's about better aging. It's about quality of life. It's about elevating your life. So if you want to do that, it is for you. What benefit of ketones would you want? So this is for you really intense keto people that want to track everything. What's a good ketone level? Well, therapeutic ketosis is basically above 0.5 millimolar. If you don't know what that all means, don't worry about it. You don't need to know that, but some of you out there are out there measuring and doing all these things, different things. So 0.5 is therapeutic. What we found is that people that tend to do above one to 1.5, between 1.5 and three, tend to thrive a little bit more. They tend to have a little bit more vitality. But 0.5 is when we start to see the shift, people's energy and focus and mental clarity. We start to see a vitality shift in them, but there is a sweet spot. But I wanna give you a range here because everybody's gonna be different 
different. And there is a correlation that's called the zone. There's a correlation between your blood sugar and your ketone levels that can even tie it in a little tighter. And that's something you're gonna hear a lot more about in the next four or five years. So optimal, let's get you 0.5 and let's get above 0.5 and let's keep it below five if you wanna get the best ketone levels. So how do you start keto? Now people are gonna be surprised what I say because what you're really asking me is what do I eat? The reality is that's actually not the best way to start keto. The best way is to have awareness of where carbs are coming from. I actually have a cheat sheet. Start cleaning out your club cupboards in your closet. Uh, prepare, prepare your diet, prepare low carb, find low carb options, start cutting those carbs down. You need a support. You need family and people to support you and you need to know why you're doing this. If you don't know why you're doing this, you're more likely to quit. So having a good, I have, a, I have young kids. My why are pretty powerful because I want to be better. I want to live better. I want to have vitality as I get older for my kids. So learning what to eat, I have so many other videos teaching you that, but knowing the five steps to starting keto is really the secret. All right, I get this question all the time. How fast can I drop weight on keto? The reality is you're trying to drop body fat, not weight, but that's okay. Uh, a good friend of mine, Dr. Stephen Anton, he's done research in this um, for many, many years, has proven that the ketogenic diet is actually the fastest diet to drop body fat um, and weight. Now, keep in mind that first week or two, you're going to be dropping a lot of excessive waste and fluid out of your system. So that's that diuretic effect, which that means you need to hydrate really, really well. And so that isn't going to be a ton of fat initially, but over time, it is the most efficient, effective way. And why that is, is because it drives your ketone levels up, which actually produces, increases fat metabolism, helps you get healthier energy and focus and mental clarity. You start moving your body more, which is the recipe for quick and fast, efficient fat loss and long-term sustainability. Really quick, how much weight would you like to drop? How much fat do you want to drop? Just give me a, go, give me a comment and let me know. All right, so what supplements should you use on keto? This is number one by far. Um, we have a product that we've been using for five years. It elevates your ketone levels. So basically you don't have to be perfect on the diet to get amazing, extraordinary results. Also has, uh, uh, it has amino acids in it. It has B vitamins in it, which B vitamins are another thing that you might need a little extra on keto. Um, a multivitamin, just a good general multivitamins, electrolytes, which is another thing that I, I highly recommend and we use. And then of course the last one is magnesium, just a little extra magnesium. Uh, you can do that through an Epsom salt bath or through some supplementation. So these are important because you might find that you're getting results, you start to plateau and you may need to bump those up a little bit to get major, major, major results. So if you need any questions on this, just pop me a comment below and I'll help, I'll help you out. All right, so what is KetoNat? Um, what is keto? We've already learned about that, but what is KetoNat? KetoNat is a product that I stand behind for the last five and a half years. 2015, we launched this product and it's basically a way to supplement ketones into your system so you don't have to be perfect on any diet. You can gradually go into it. You can go a little bit more extreme, a little bit less extreme, and it keeps your ketone levels elevated. It's a therapeutic ketone supplement that's bioidentical. It's freaking amazing. It's like instead of swimming to Hawaii, you can take an airplane to Hawaii. It's just easier and it's more sustainable and it allows people to have flexibility without being perfect. Also, not have to have all the guilt of messing up. So that's why I stand behind it. I encourage anybody that's going to go do keto, get this in your hands and just hit me a message. I'll take care of you. I'll coach you and guide you around the whole process and it'll definitely is a game changer. All right, I'm gonna be nice in this one. What's lazy keto? Lazy keto means you're just gonna half, half ass it. Though what it really means is that you're not, you're not being strict and rigid on your plan, and you're allowing yourself, if you're like, oh, I wanna have this, you're gonna have this. So majority, let's say 80% of the time, you're low carb, and the other 20, you kind of get away with what you wanna get away with. That's lazy keto. Um, it's a made up term that was made up a few years back, but the reality is, is be careful. You may not get the ultimate goals and results that you want. And so my only suggestion for people that are doing lazy keto is to drink keto nat um, because it allows you to keep your ketone levels elevated when you take the days off. Because it's not the one day that you take the day off, it's the three or four days later. It's not the the 20% that gets you in trouble is that when that 20 turns into 30 or 40%. So lazy keto, is just it's just a doing it 80% of the time. All right, so I get this a lot. Why do I need to drink keto nat when my body already produces ketones? Well, the reality is is 70% of you, your body is not producing ketones very well or very effectively. So by elevating them up, gives you the benefits of feeling good. So you can weather the storm to get to your body's production. So it allows your body to make it more efficient at producing your own ketones, which is a win-win. 
And most people can't elevate their ketone levels high enough to get the major benefits. Now, for somebody like myself that's already in ketosis, I use it as an added bonus. It's like an accelerator for anti-aging, brain performance, quality of life. So I'm taking it to just another level. So if you're looking for better, if you're looking for more, definitely drink Keto Nat, no matter what kind of diet you're on, even if it's a ketogenic diet. All right, so a good friend of mine, Dr. Brecher, called me up and we're just talking. He goes, he goes, what's the most important thing about keto? And I go, about, about what we're doing, about Prove It, about this community. And as an independent Prove It promoter, I realized that it's not actually the ketones. Superior in every way. The best product I've ever seen in my 20 plus year career. It's actually the community. What I find is that most people are in an island by themselves trying to make a health, health transformation or a life transformation. They need people behind them, support and team and camaraderie. That is the biggest thing. So I would say this is that if you're looking for better in any way, and I don't care if this has anything to do with keto or with us, go find people that have what you want and then are going in the place that you're going and go spend time with them. Now, in the same time, I would still drink our amazing product because it's only going to elevate your life as you do it. So Come join the mission to better. Come join the mission to a million. Cheers, y'all. Hey, so what are keto foods? Well, it's actually really simple. I'm going to give you some do's and some don'ts. The do's are low-carb veggies, green leafy vegetables, asparagus, cauliflower, broccoli. I know the cauliflower is white. Broccoli, Brussels sprouts, all your green vegetables, uh, moderate protein. So salmon, fish, uh, squirrel, rabbit, elk, you name it. All those protein sources are just fine. And then don't be afraid of fat. So you get things like avocado, butter, olive oil, uh, avocado oil. I use duck fat. Now be careful of not going off and start doing fat bombs and all these other crazy stuff. You don't need to start there. But to get more about recipes and get more about uh, the keto guide, come to my site. It's theketoprosystem.com and check it out. All right, is fruit okay on keto? This is a, this is a this is a tough one for people. People are like, it's all natural, it's organic, it's this, it's that. The reality is, is a lot of fruit has a lot of sugar in it, and it's it's affecting you to get into ketosis, especially if fat loss is your goal. I do have some rules. If you're already leaned out, if you're leaning out well, and you're and you're transforming well, there is some fruits that you can have in moderation. Some berries, strawberries, raspberries, blackberries, blueberries, because they don't have as much carbs and sugars in them. But be careful with fruit. It's really, really, really tricky because people will have this perception that it's good. For them and it may be in some some sorts but from a ketogenic perspective to max or maximize fat loss fruit can really mess people up so i would tell you this if you're really active and you're really lean you can get away with a little bit more but if you're not i would lean towards the less side of it and if you're going to add any kind of fruits in berries are where you start we're talking about a reboot. We're talking about a, a reset of how do you do that? How's that? How's that look for you? And it's uh, 24 hours. It's 60 hours. We're giving people the opportunity to create a better relationship with food, allow themselves to metabolically shift, allow themselves to create creating momentum in their life and their health and their vitality. Right? You elevate your ketone levels, you elevate your life. And this is what science has been proven now. But what we realize is that when people go 24 hours without food or 60 hours without food, it's, it like stresses them out. They're overwhelmed. They don't think they can do it. They are all in this fear moment. So we have a kit and tools to use to help support you. We have a community and a team to support you in coaching and, and, and mentorship and guidance through the process because you can do this. You can change your life. You can go 24 hours without food. That's a huge win. You can go 60 hours if you want to without food. That's a huge win, but we're going to give you the tools in the environment to create a success pattern for you to be successful. So come join us and let's go change our lives together. This idea of eating every two or three hours or five meals a day. First off, I'm not going to get into the history of how it started, but it's a mistake for the majority of the population. There's maybe some small, small groups that we could justify that for a short amount of time. But think back in our history of time. Ancestrally, our, our ancestors would have never eaten that often. Food wasn't that plentiful. If the Egyptians would have been eating five times a day, they'd be still building the pyramids today. They wouldn't have time to do anything. It's like a prison of food. The reality is we should eat more hungry, stop more full. Most people should eat one, two times a day. Yes, if you're really active, maybe you go up to three times a day and you'll get better vitality, better health, better longevity by ultimately eating less and less often. So intermittent fast, fast more often and you'll feel way better than ever before. And let's get away from these every two, three hours of eating times because it's not working long-term for people. Cheers. 
we're gonna talk about prolonged fasting, long-term fasting, meaning fasting for 24 hours or even longer. So we've been doing this, for, I've been doing this for over 20 years. My first fast was 14 days. That's stupid and crazy. I don't actually recommend it, but I've been no, done multiple long-term fasting. And when I'm talking about fasting, I'm talking about elimination of food, still drinking plenty of water, or highly mineralized water for hydration purposes. Now, the benefit of this is a lot of things. You increase autophagy, you increase cellular turnover and, and, and long-term vitality. We Scientific has shown that, uh, that fasting is one of the best long-term things for anti-aging and better quality of life. So I'm a huge fan of it. The challenge is, is that if you're starting out in a pretty unhealthy place, you want to take your time. Start with intermittent fasting, work up to, to metabolic Mondays or a one hour or one day fast. And then you can work up to our 60 hour fast that we do every single month. So it's a great tool to use to help advance your health and your life and your vitality and body composition. But intermittent fasting, what is it? What does it mean? Basically, uh, fasting in itself means elimination of something. In this case, we're talking about fasting from food, eliminating food for a period of time. Intermittent fasting would be, I'm going to stop eating at 8 p.m. or 7 p.m. and I'm going to wait 12 or 16 hours. We all fast through the night unless you get up and eat in the middle of the night. So you can do a little longer. So a lot of people are doing right now or they're doing an eating window between 12 o'clock and then don't eat after 8 p.m. And they're fasting 16 hours. Now you can do that a little longer or shorter. It's up to you, but that's simple. That's all intermittent fasting is. If you combine intermittent fasting with a low carb diet, eating low carb between 12 and 8, wow, you can get absolutely amazing results. You elevate your ketone levels and you feel really, really, really good. So that's what intermittent fasting is. I think everybody should give it a try. Do it at least five or six days a week. Cheers. The reality is, is that if you can never weigh yourself and you look in the mirror and you're very confident, happy in who you are, you are the winner. You've, you've accomplished the greatness. Uh, we should be weighing ourselves as little as possible. Ideally, twice a year, checking in with your doctor, finding out where you're at. Um, no more than once a month. The reason is, is that when people weigh themselves, they're not, they're only weighing one variable. There's so many variables to weight that it can really mess things up. It doesn't measure bone density. It doesn't measure muscle mass. It doesn't measure how much water you're holding. It doesn't measure any of those things and often causes psychological warfare. Only 10% of the population can weigh themselves and get excited about beating the scale. Most people feel emotionally defeated because it's not where they want it to be or they get really excited because it moved. Let's quit that. And if you want long-term results, you have to get rid of the scale long-term for you to ultimately feel the way you want to feel. Cheers. I have to apologize. I don't have a bottle of vodka in front of me right now, but can you drink on keto? The truth is you can. It's actually pretty simple. It's one of the simplest things to do is to drink when you're in ketosis because um, there's a lot of low carb options. Alcohol in itself, pure alcohol, is actually keto friendly. Now, there is a little caveat. Wine can have more carbs. Red dry, red wine, three to five grams. Sweeter stuff can go way up from there. Beer, they have low carb beers, two, 2.5 or three grams per, per beer. So you can pull it off. Be careful though, because alcohol can really slow down fat loss and fat metabolism. So if you're not getting results, you do want to start looking at cutting back your alcohol. It's not because it's not in ketosis. It's more because it's, it's preventing you to get that weight loss or that fat loss goal. So alcohol can definitely be consumed on the ketogenic diet. Let's talk about exercise on keto. Now, what people are often thinking about is like, what can get me the best results? And I'm going to give you two answers here. This is the two answers. The best exercise you can do is the one that you're willing to do. The one that you can be consistent to. I don't care if it's dancing to Richard Simmons. I don't care if it's, if it's hit. I don't care if it's weights. I don't care if it's cardio, whatever you're consistently will do walk, do that. Cause that's going to ultimately get you your goal. But if you said, Hey, what is the most effective exercise for fat loss and dropping weight? I would tell you two hardcore days of HIIT training or heavy, hard to, hard to go weights where you feel it, like it kicked your butt, two. The other days, I want you to do low intensity, like 60 minutes to 90 minute, like low intensity walk, biking. And I find for the normal person, non-athletic person, that is the best recipe. You can do that every day and then you can do two hardcore workouts a week and you'll get great results. Cheers. We're going to talk keto sweeteners. This is something, again, I want people to be careful of is too many people are looking for all these alternative desserts and fat bombs and they add all these extra stuff to it. 
and it's probably not going to be necessary for your long-term goals. But if you're going to use and you make a dessert and have some sweeteners, um, I just recommend, we have a couple products that we recommend that are amazing. Um, and so we use things like stevia, keto-friendly. Um, and we have another form formula that we use, it uses um, allulose, it's keto-friendly. Monk fruit can be utilized. Xylitol, be careful of, although it could probably be okay for most people. And yitharol, which is another one that we use, is also keto-friendly. But be careful, what's out there people are saying are keto, they may be lacing it with other other stuff so look for the most organic clean sources that you can get and enjoy your keto journey y'all all right so can vegetarians do keto the truth is is they can but it's really really hard for a lot of people starting out to become a vegan or vegetarian it's already hard um, not everybody but a lot of people but to go keto and go low carb low enough to get your body fat to really metabolize your own fat um, and to be uh, metabolically efficient it's really, really tough. So most of my vegetarians and vegans, I don't even won't even talk to them if they don't use one of our products. Um, it supplements amino acids. It supplements from protein. It supplements ketones for them, B vitamins, things that you would naturally be low in already, just on the type of diet you're doing, and you get results really, really, really quickly. And it doesn't have to. It doesn't allow you to be so strict with low carb, and you can get the really cool ba balance and benefits of being in ketosis. So yes, you can do it, but it's really, really tough, and you got to work really hard for it. All right, so is there any side effects of being in ketosis? Yes, energy, focus, mood, sleep, fat loss, you feel good. There are a few things that you wanna be aware of. Number one, ketones are a natural diuretic. Why I use a very specific tool for hydration. You can definitely get this, just, just let me know, I can take care of you on that. But the other benefit or the other effect that you might notice is a lot of shift and changes in your GI tract. So diuretic and GI tract trans transitions and shifts um, both happen. Well, let's be honest. Most of us don't hydrate very well in the first place. And most of us have messed up GI tracts because of the diets we've chosen. So both of those will get better, but they, it can take some time to transition. And so stay tuned and, and reach out to me if you have any questions on this. I have a lot of tools to help support you through that. Hey, thanks for checking out this video. For the next video of the series, check out right here. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel so that we send out the next video. You get notified and you can check out the latest on the keto journey. Cheers, y'all.